Hi, this video covers the adjacency matrix graph data structure. The adjacency matrix is one data structure we can use to represent a graph. So first let's give kind of an overview of how the structure works before we get into the details. Remember that adjacency is defined between two vertices. The whole concept of adjacent has to do with two vertices. So for example, the add edge function has two arguments for two different vertices because we add an edge from one vertex to another vertex. So anytime we have one of these situations where we need to do like a lookup with two different indexes, one way of having a lookup with two different indices is to have a 2D array or a 2D vector. So we use one index i to be the first index of the 2D array, and we use j to be the second index of the 2D array. This is something already built into programming, and you've probably worked with 2D arrays or 2D vectors before. Remember that we deliberately index the vertices 0 through n minus 1. Part of the reason for that is because now i and j will work very conveniently as array indices. So an adjacency matrix is a n by n matrix A of Booleans. The main part of the data structure is a n row, n column matrix, in other words, a 2D array or 2D vector, and the data type of each element is a Boolean, true or false. We also need ints for n and m. n is the number of vertices, m is the number of edges, so that we can do those vertex count and edge count operations in constant time. And here's the whole point of this. There's an invariant on this adjacency matrix. The invariant says a i j is true when there is an edge from vertex i to vertex j. So we've got this big 2D array. It can have two subscripts, a i, a j, you know, a and j are the two indices or two subscripts. And that element is true when there's an edge from i to j. That's how we store the adjacency information. So a i j would be false if there is no edge from vertex i to vertex j. Here's how we sketch one of these things. So in the top right is an example of a graph. And if we want to sketch just the adjacency matrix part, that would be everything below it. So the top here, that's not part of a sketch of an adjacency matrix. Below that is the sketch of the adjacency matrix. So we need to draw an n by n grid. That's this grid here that rep represents the matrix elements. And it, you know, it would probably be best to write false and true in here. That would be the most accurate thing because our C++ code will use the Boolean type with true and false in here, but it gets kind of tedious and cluttered to write out the word true and false everywhere in these big grids. So instead we use one for true, zero for false. That's a pretty common convention. So zero means false. There is no edge there. One means true. There is an edge there. Remember that the invariant is that a i j is one when there is an edge from i to j. And we follow the convention in math and C++ that i is the row number. The first subscript is the row that's in the vertical direction. So zero is at the top and i denotes which of these five rows we're talking about. And j, the second subscript, is the column number. That's on the horizontal left to right and zero is at the left. This is the standard notation that's used for matrices in math and in most programming languages. Also in the sketch we put n and m to be clear that the adjacency matrix data structure stores those two things. n is the number of vertices and m is the number of edges. So right here is a sketch of this graph and just to show how this works, everywhere that there's an edge from i to j, we make the corresponding i, j entry of the matrix a 1, everything else is a 0. So one thing we can note is that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 edges in the graph, that's why m is 6, and so there should be 6 1s in the matrix, and I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's a quick check, that checks out. So there is an edge from 3 to 1, so that means if I go to row 3, column 1, we see a true there. And that's the way that this edge from 3 to 1 is present in the matrix. Or, for example, the edge from 4 to 0. If I go to row 4, column 0, we see a 1. This 1 entry here represents true. That's because AIJ or A40 is true to record the fact that there's an edge from 4 to 0. So now let's make some initial observations about this. Finding whether an edge exists is an array lookup, and that's going to take constant time. It's really fast. So if I want to ask, is there a edge between 1 and 4? From 1 to 4, I just go to row 1, column 4. I see a false, so the answer is no, there's no edge there. Those kind of array lookups take constant time. They're super fast. But out edges will involve looping through a row. 
So the out edges of three are all of the vertex numbers that have an outgoing edge from three. So that would be one and four. How could I form that vector? Well, I've got to go to row three, and then I'll have to loop through the entire row and collect up all the trues. So I've got to loop through all n columns here in row number three. That will take big O of n time. There's no real way around that. And in edges of j will involve looping through a column. So if I want to know the incoming edges to four, I could go to column four and then loop through all the rows. See how there's only one true at, at number three? That's because the in edges of four is just the vertex number three. So I can compute the in, ed in edges to four by looping through all of the rows at column four. But again, that's big O of n time to loop through all of the rows. So now let's look at some pseudocode to implement this. This isn't exactly C++, but it's C++ style pseudocode. So I've got my directed adjacency matrix class. Doesn't need to be a template class anymore because there's no base element type. And I've got ints for n and m, pretty simple, the number of vertices and edges. And then right here is my matrix. I've got a vector of vectors of Booleans. This is the C++ vector way of declaring a 2D vector. And I'm calling it A to match the notation earlier in the presentation. So the constructor is given n, the number of vertices. We initialize the n data member to that n, and m starts out at 0 because there are no edges yet. Those are pretty simple. And then we use the fill constructor to fill up a. This is kind of an idiom in C++. This is how you create a n by n matrix. I say initialize the outer vector a to be n copies of another vector of booleans that has n copies of false. So this vector bool n false creates a n element wide row that has n falses. And then I make n copies of that. So that's how I make n total rows. This makes an n by n matrix all in one line of code, which is convenient. But it takes big O of n squared time because I'm initializing n times n Boolean falses. So that's where the n squared time comes from. Vertex count and edge count are just accessors that return n and m. They take constant time. Has edge is pretty simple. Has edge is supposed to return true if there is an edge from i to j. Remember the invariant a, i, j is true when there's an edge from i to j. So I just need to look up in a, i, j and see whether it's true or not. So I've got an error check to check that i and j are legal indices. If i is less than 0 or greater than or equal to n, throw an exception. We do the same thing for j. That's kind of the hardest part of this. We just return a, i, j. Just look up row i, column j, and that tells us whether there's an edge there. So this takes constant time, super simple and fast. Adding an edge is also pretty simple. So we have the same error checking. Once we get past the error checking, we just say a, i, j equals true. So we set that element to true. That's constant time. Removing an edge is also pretty simple. We're supposed to throw an exception if there's no edge there. So I just say if there is not has edge from i to j, throw an exception. So we're reusing has edge from before. Has edge takes constant time. Note, by the way, I don't need to check i and j because has edge already is doing that for me. So when I call has edge, if i or j are illegal indices, the first thing has edge does is throw an exception on illegal indices. So I don't need to repeat that work. And if I get past the if statement, we know that i and j are legal and that there is no edge from i to j, uh, or there is an edge from i to j. So I set a i j to false. That erases the edge out. So this is constant time. Now for out edges. It gets a little bit more tricky with out edges and in edges. So what I need to do is loop through all n columns of row number i. So for example, to compute the out edges of vertex number three, I need to go to row three, loop through every column. And if a i j is true, then add that j to my list. So we're returning a vector of ints. We're given a i, a row number. We've got the same range check. If i is an illegal index, we throw an exception. Then I create a vector of ints called out. It's the list or, or vector of out edges. And I loop through every column j that's in range. If there is an edge from i to j, then I add j to the back of uh, this out vector. And, so, and then I return out at the end. So, you know, pretty simple. It's not super complicated, but it's less efficient. This loop clearly has n iterations. Has edge is constant time. Adding to the back of a vector is constant amortized time. So this whole thing takes big O of n time. Finally, in edges is basically the same thing, but instead of 
looping through all of the columns of a row. Instead, I've, I'm given a column J and I need to loop through all the rows of that column. So to compute the in edges of vertex one, I need to go to column one, loop through all the rows. If a given row is true, then add that row number to the result vector. So similarly, we're returning a vector of int. We're given an int J. We do the error check on J. I create a vector of ints that will return. We loop through each row, and if there is an edge from i to j, then I add i to this uh, in vector, and then we return in at the end. Okay, so that is the adjacency matrix data structure, and as it says here, creating takes quadratic time, big O of n squared. That's pretty slow, but once you get past that, it speeds up. Vertex count and edge count are constant time accessors. Adding an edge, removing an edge, has edge, those are all constant time. Those are very fast. However, out edges and in edges are quite a bit slower. Those are linear time. So we'll see the next data structure, the adjacency list, can speed up out edges in particular, which is an important operation in certain algorithms.